Welcome back to another live Q&A as I like to be available for you on Wednesdays and you can call in with any question you have and I will help you to process your issue live in the Zoom room. But for those of you who are slowly joining, uh, I would like you to begin to think about what is your biggest complaint right now in your life? Uh, let's just take a moment to reflect on what is your biggest complaint right now in your life, okay? If you want to really benefit from this time that we have together in this virtual group therapy, uh, I want you to be participating okay so I believe that most of you have written down your complaint correct if you like write it in the chat box write it down in the chat box below what is your biggest complaint right now in your life and if you think it's a very abstract question, you can really think about what is your biggest complaint over the last 24 hours? What's that thing that really frustrates you? What's that thing that gets you upset and angry? What's that thing that keeps you up at night? What's the worst thing that can happen? regarding that complaint? What's the worst scenario you can imagine? Just reflect on a moment how your life would change if, if this got out of hand, if it got out of control. Okay, and if that happened, what would you do then? Take a moment, this is a very serious question. If that worst case scenario happened, what would you do then? All right, now imagine that happened. What would you do if that happened? What actions would you take if that happened to make the situation better? Imagine now the timeline passing, time would pass. What would happen after five years if that worst case scenario happened? I'm just gonna give you a little time to write down your notes. And what would happen after 10 years To you and what would that mean about you what would it what would it reflect about you in particular okay now imagine another 10 years so that means 20 years would pass what would that mean about you and you can write that statement down you can write down your beliefs so we're talking about like the worst case scenario the worst if your nightmare kind of came to be what would it mean about you if you look deeper what is your belief about yourself what would it mean about you what would it mean about your worth, about your value, um, about who you are? What would it mean about you? So now we're gonna look at that belief that you have, this worst case scenario fear. fear. And what is the fear then? What is your actual fear? I want you to write down the sentence, I am afraid that, 
I am deeply afraid that. What is your deep fear of the worst case scenario and what that means about you? I'm repeating the question sometimes just to give you a little time to catch up. Now I would like you to ask yourself, is it true? This is the first <clears throat> filter of the Alkestis method. Okay, is it true? This question is based on ethos, the Greek word meaning integrity. So if you're completely honest with yourself, is that belief system true? Is that narrative that you are telling yourself true? Or maybe if you're honest with yourself, you may realize that you are being insincere, untrue. In other words, you may be lying to yourself. Socrates, the great Greek philosopher, taught that we often believe our thoughts even if they are not true. Okay, we have been conditioned, we have a cognitive bias, and we believe a lot of things that are simply not true. So be honest with yourself and say, are you dramatizing? or overgeneralizing. If you're honest with yourself, that narrative that you're telling yourself, let's be honest. Maybe you're being a little dramatic. I know from myself, I have been in the past very dramatic and exaggerating. And slowly I began working on this way of thinking and removing the drama, removing the exaggeration and the emotionalism, okay? Philosophy is all about truth, finding truth. So if you want to be a practicing philosopher, you have to begin to become more honest with yourself, more objective, with yourself and in all your observations. So on a scale from one to 10, how true was that original belief, that original fear? On a scale from one to a hundred, one out of a hundred, how true is it? Perhaps now that you're being a little more focused and honest with yourself, you realize that you are dramatizing, you are exaggerating, or you are taking things much too personally. Be honest with yourself. This is what it's all about. And here's an opportunity now I'm speaking to you. I'd like you to say, who would you be without that belief system? Who would you be without this dramatic, over-sensitive self? Who would you be? What sort of thoughts would you be having if you weren't being so dramatic or overgeneralizing or taking things too personally? What kind of thought would you have instead? Who could you be in that scenario? Really, imagine that difficult scenario in your life. Imagine the people who are involved and the way you usually play that scene. How could you play this scene in a different way? How could you play your role? You know, as Epictetus, the Greek philosopher, would say that you have a role in your life. How 
well can you play that role? And your leading principle needs to be virtue, what the Greeks call areti. The principle of truth, virtue, and ethos, when you have these as your guiding principles, you can't go wrong. You will stop lying to yourself, in other words. So just imagine for a moment, who would you be if you were not so dramatic? How could you be? Imagine perhaps someone who you admire. How would the person that you admire handle this situation? handle this situation differently. And I want you to be writing in the notes and I will be reading a little. Okay, thank you for joining. Okay, so we've come to the conclusion that you have been lying to yourself. You tell yourself things that are not 100% true. So what you need to do is always pass your thoughts through the filter of ethos and have that as your guiding principle. Ethos, uh, virtue, uh, as I said, what the Greeks call areti. This is very important. And when you have these principles guiding you, your life will transform. Wonderful. So now we can move to another question. When you have this limiting belief, when you play this narrative in your mind over and over again, is it kind? Is that a kind thing you're doing to yourself? just putting yourself down, uh, you know, you're sabotaging yourself with these kind of thoughts. It's not a kind thing to do to yourself when you keep repeating this self-sabotaging thought. So you really need to start being kind with yourself, more like a guardian. You know, the Greeks called this type of self-guardianship. They called it storyi. Storyi means to love oneself or another in the type of way that a parent loves a child. So you need to be there for yourself as a parent, loving yourself unconditionally and making sure you don't have what I call self-sabotaging thoughts and limiting beliefs. These are harming you. They lessen your energy. They lessen your immune system. They increase the cortisol levels and you're just more stressed. And especially now during uh, this difficult health challenge, it's not good to be repeating negative thoughts to yourself. So now let's look at how you're treating the other people who are involved in the drama. Are you being kind to the other people in this story? Or are you limiting them? Are you labeling them? You know, Plato, the Greek philosopher, said that we should always treat other people with loving kindness because they are suffering from some great burden that we cannot fathom, we, we cannot imagine. But when you're dealing with other people, especially people who are upset or angry or treating you in a bad way, it's usually because they have some big problem, some unhealed trauma, what Gabor Mate, the uh, clinical psychologist from Canada, he calls it trauma. We're all dealing 
with unhealed trauma. So it's important to treat other people with kindness. And this all comes back to you. I didn't say not to protect yourself against the toxicity of other people, but you must always remember to, that the other person may be carrying uh, some unhealed trauma. So now let's proceed to the third question. The third question, is it useful? Is this narrative you are telling yourself, you are sabotaging yourself with, is that a useful thing to do? There may be some use in that fear. It might be trying to inform you, to warn you of something. But you can keep the information without all the negative and toxic and dramatic emotions. You can just say, thank you for the information. I will use this without all the drama. So this is the simple Algesbis method. Is it true? Is it kind? And is it useful? And these are based on the three golden principles of Greek philosophy. Ethos, pathos, and logos. These were taught to us by Aristotle in his book, The Rhetoric, and repurposed for self-leadership so that we can lead ourselves. So now we come to the final stage of this exercise, and that is, I want you to rewrite that limiting belief write a new sentence in a way that it is more empowering to you. All right? Just sit there and rewrite that sentence. And if you like, share it in the link. Share it in the comments below. I would like to read your new empowering statement. Edit that statement so that it is Instead of a limiting belief and narrative, it is a strong and empowering statement. <clears throat> it's a very simple system. You simply ask yourself, is it true? Is it kind? Is it useful? Ethos, pathos, and logos. Now, I want to give you five minutes. I'm going to just play a little music. that you've written your new sentence now and we can do a meditation together okay I'm just gonna play a little 
music and I want you now, we're going to take that statement and we're going to put it into your subconscious. All you have to do is take three deep breaths together. Inhale deeply, deeply, deeply. Relax your facial muscles, relax your shoulders, and just feel totally, totally relaxed. Now take another deep, deep breath. You can close your eyes if you feel more relaxed. Relax your facial muscles, relax your shoulders, and send that oxygen to the whole body. Add one more deep breath. Inhale deeply, deeply, relaxing the whole physical body. And now you must feel deeply relaxed.